understand why voltage-gated potassium and sodium channels have different voltage and time dependencies, we need to consider the individual structure of the channels and how they function by themselves. For the moment, the currents that we have considered are currents that correspond to the summed input of thousands of channels. To record currents coming out of a single channel, scientists use the patch clamp technique. In this technique, a small micropipette, which contains an aqueous solution of varying concentrations, is pressed against the membrane of the neuron. After applying a bit of suction to the back of the pipette, it allows to create a very tight electrical seal on the edges, such that there is very little ionic leaks in and out of the pipette. A metal electrode that is connected to an amplifier is inserted inside the pipette. The other terminal of the amplifier is connected to the command voltage. The output of the amplifier makes a loop through a feedback resistor, and the current is measured at the output as well. As you can see, the patch clamp is essentially a voltage clamp setup, but instead of clamping the entire cell, the experimenter clamps a single patch of cell containing only a few channels. One important upside with the patch clamp is that the technique has various configurations that allows the experimenter to vary the experimental conditions more freely. The current setup that we have right here is usually referred to as the cell-attached patch clamp, and it allows to directly measure the current from individual channels. From the cell-attached patch clamp, if the pipette is retracted while the seal is still established, it will remove the attached bit of membrane from the cell. This configuration is known as the inside-out configuration and has the benefit for the experimenter of having control over the internal medium. Again, from the cell-attached recording, one can increase the suction to a point that will break the membrane. In this configuration, also known as the whole cell patch clamp, the pipette is continuous with the interior of the cell, which allows to record measurements of the potential inside the entire cell. From the whole cell patch clamp, retracting the pipette with the seal still established will, here again, break the membrane, but interestingly enough, it will reform on itself to create this outside-out configuration. The outside-out configuration is very important when the experimenters want to have control on the extracellular medium. This is usually a good technique to measure currents going through individual ligand-gated channels. In summary, there are four different configurations of the patch clamp method that all have their particular advantages that the experimenter can utilize. To see how this technique works, let's first do an example of an outside-out recording on the leak potassium channel to see what results we can draw from it. In our system, Imagine that the concentration of potassium inside the pipette is 140 millimolar and the outside is 5 millimolar. With these values, which closely resemble what happens physiologically, we can compute the equilibrium potential for potassium through the Nernst equation, which gives us a value of negative 88 millivolts. Now, let's use the patch clamp technique to clamp the system at various voltages. For each command voltage value, the microscopic current recordings in picoamperes, as a function of time, will look a bit like this. As a side note, here microscopic simply refers to the fact that the current comes from one channel. As you can see, microscopic currents are quite different from the usual continuous currents we are used to see. Indeed, microscopic currents turn on and off, and that is caused by the fact that channels essentially behave like random switches. When the channel is closed, there is no current passing through, and as soon as the channels open, a somewhat constant value of current flows through. The number of times the channel opens and for what duration is entirely probabilistic. So on the individual scale, ion channels behave somewhat very randomly. Now, to understand the direction and the magnitude of the currents, we need to go back to a relation we have previously established. Remember that leak channels are simple resistors and the current flowing to them is equal to a constant conductance times the driving force. As such, the results here directly showcase this relation. For example, in the third trial, the membrane potential is clamped at the equilibrium potential and thus there is no net flux of potassium. Between trials 1 and 2, the increase in current simply comes from the fact that the driving force for potassium has increased 
And in the fourth trial, the inward current happens because the driving force has switched signs. Using the physiological concentrations in and out for sodium, we can perform the same analysis with the leak sodium channels. Here again, the x-intercept corresponds to the equilibrium potential. Now, what is more interesting to us, however, is to see if the patch clamp method can give us a bit of insight as to why the macroscopic current from voltage-gated potassium channels is so different from the current coming from voltage-gated sodium channels. It turns out that when one performs multiple trials of the patch clamp experiment on both voltage-gated channels, the individual currents coming from the channels have the same general differences. The potassium current is delayed and sustained, whereas the sodium current opens first and rapidly inactivates. This entails that the difference we are looking for lies in the molecular structures of each voltage-gated channel. Another important point here is that with voltage-gated channels, it now becomes tricky to make them an IV curve because, as we saw, the conductance changes as a function of time and voltage. Nevertheless, we can arrive at a good model that explains both the time and voltage dependence of conductance if we first consider the molecular structure of voltage-gated channels. Thank you for watching this video. If there was anything unclear or there was a mistake somewhere in the video, make sure to let me know in the comment section. If you enjoyed this video and found it useful, you can consider leaving a like and subscribing to support the channel. On the right, you will see the informational resources that I've used to produce this video. Thank you again for watching and I'll see you in our next discussion.